Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we have a very unusual video. Today we have, let's say, a guest <laughs> who uh, you could have uh, shown behind uh, the videos uh, in my previous vlogs. And you guys asked me to uh, ask my husband some questions about how is it to be a diplomat, how to uh, get this job and what is the diplomatic community so all that and even more is going to be in this video but first let me introduce you this is my husband his name is Carlos and uh, he is going to answer your questions hello my <laughs> Hi. good to hear you uh, well that's it today I move from behind the camera to in front of the camera right yeah so I'm happy to answer your questions yeah shoot it Yes, so guys, and um, I have written down uh, eight questions, more or less, the ones that you've asked. And the, the first question is uh, the most asked on my channel, basically, is uh, how is it to become a diplomat? So can you tell us, please, how is it the process to become a diplomat? What people have to do to become a diplomat? Well, in most uh, foreign services, it's in, it involves uh, applying for uh, a series of exams and uh, tests. So you will do this uh, process and it's a very tough process. You have to know about history. You have in the Brazilian Foreign Service case, you have to know about history, geography, economics, uh, politics, and you have to know languages just in order to apply for this uh, process. We have to know from the start, fluent uh, Portuguese, of course, and then English, French, and Spanish. Writing, uh, write, I'm sorry, reading, uh, writing, and speaking. Comprehension, like Comprehension. it has beyond yeah. high level, right? Yeah. Okay, and um, was it uh, an easy process for you to become a diplomat? Is it so that you just came and you knew these four languages and you just like, tuck, I've been here a diplomat? No, because the exam is very tough. It's designed in a certain way, so you have to try lots of times in order that you get used to it. So in my case, I tried three times. Three times. How, how many years did it take you to become a diplomat? Three to four years. Three to four years. So guys, just the... Uh, you can hear me. So uh, to become a diplomat is first very difficult and it may take you many years. That's important to keep in mind if you think about this career path. Uh, what are the ranks in your career? So once you pass this uh, series of exams... Are you becoming ambassador recently? No, no, not at all. Far from it. You start at the bottom of the career. The career has six ranks from bottom to top. It's third, second, and plus secretaries. These are all secretaries, which are the bottom of the career. These are already official. You're official member of the, an officer of the foreign service, but these are the lowest rankings. And then after these three secretary levels, you have counselor, minister, and then ambassador. So ambassador counts like it's the top. It's the top. It's like a general. It's and the top. Like every every diplomat becomes an ambassador. Yeah, not necessarily. Some diplomats they don't reach this level. I'm currently first secretary. I'm let's say in the middle of the career, and I'm hoping to be. I hope to be promoted sometime in the near future to counselor, which is a mid of a level of the career. So guys, so there are six six levels and you kind of get rebellated, right? Yeah, this is important, that during the process, you get constantly, you are re-evaluated. So before becoming a secretary, I had to do a series of tests and they will see how updated you are about politics and specific topics. Before becoming minister, you have to present a thesis like a PhD. So it's very demanding. And uh, not to mention that when you pass the exam, the first one, and you become a diplomat, a diplomat. After that, I thought, okay, I'm going to be a diplomat. No, they actually made me sit for two years in the diplomatic academy wow. to go yes, okay. to be studying in depth all the subjects that we already were exempt in the initial test. So it's to make sure that we are in top 
uh, preparation, let's say, for the... So that's... But this is very important to understand that it's not such an easy process when you think about it. Uh, another question that you guys asked. I hope oh, they can hear me. No, they can't hear you. <laughs> guys, sorry. I'm going to speak in the microphone better because I don't know how to see the sound. So the next question is um, what a diplomat can and cannot do. Well, what we cannot do. I would say what we can do. Uh, our job is basically uh, engaging yes. with uh, our counterparts, in this case, all the diplomats, local authorities. So this we can do. What yeah. we cannot do, we cannot disclose uh, confidential information. And this is not because we're diplomats. Every uh, company, every institution has some level of confidentiality in their information, in their documents, even private firms. Uh, so. Of course, we cannot disclose this kind of information, but we are encouraged to engage with another people in order to exchange information and that we can talk about it. Okay, then, if you have more questions about it, what cool. diplomats can and cannot do, write in the comments below. Maybe eventually in the future, we will be able to answer additional questions, I hope. Let's see how this video is going to go. Uh, Another question uh, is, uh, do you feel homesick? Is it okay for you to be uh, living all the time abroad? Well, uh, this is all like a personal uh, issue. I personally, I don't feel homesick at all. I, I, I my family is uh, an immigrant family in Brazil, as you know, lots of immigration. So my mother is Japanese, my father is Portuguese Brazilian. So I already grew up with these two languages spoken at home, different cultures. So actually for me, I feel cozy listening to different languages, eating different food, being exposed to different cultures. This is what makes me feel good. I don't feel exactly easy when it's just one culture going, but this is me. It's not because I have South Africa's Brazil. It's just because I like to be exposed to other cultures. So I don't have this homesickness, saudade, as we say in Portuguese. Yeah, yes. But I, I like to be abroad and I really enjoy being in other countries. I, I was posted before to uh, a short-term postings, temporary postings to Korea, uh, South Korea, of course. Yes. Then I did to, I was posted back to Brazil, then to Rome, fantastic years, you remember? Yes, I remember. Then, now uh, we are here in Russia and I really like it. It's a great experience. It's a challenging experience. Uh, this Especially for Brazilian diplomat, right? Because it's such a different culture. It's too far from us. Ling language is a, a real barrier and uh, the climate is also alphabets different and the uh, climate uh, wise, it's also very tough for us. Well, for, for I think even for Russians, right? It's Russians, it's very yeah. cold. That's why it's challenging, but it's okay. And I'm really enjoying the being here. Okay. Another question, like I received from my subscriber. Uh, would you recommend to become a diplomat? Like the guys asked, like, would you suggest to become a diplomat or is it better to search for another career? Like your opinion? Well, if you can commit to this life, if you can commit to uh, living abroad many years, being away from your family. Again, there are like professional things to consider and personal things to consider and they interfere with each other. So for me, it's very hard to be away from family members. Even though I like being abroad, even though I enjoy the experience of being an expat, I find it hard to be away from family members. Yeah, I know that some colleagues, even though they are diplomats and they applied for this, they have a tough time being abroad. And I'm not talking about uh, their relatives. So each person will have a different experience. I think it's up to you, but you have to know that you will be moving from country to country every three years, that you will not have a fixed address, that all your belongings must fit into a container every yes. three years. Yeah, things will be lost, things will be broken. Uh, 
and most important, all the network of your daily life that you have established after living a couple of years in one country. People you know, friends, hairdresser, hairdresser, guy where, as you said, hairdresser, where you go to, I don't know, your gym, a guy who is a restaurant. Where you, the routine. The routine, your daily life routine. After three years, the ministry looks at you and says, okay, game over, back up and let's move. You know, and what do you do with all this like that you have built? Yeah. Of course, you, you will not forget these people you may come back as a tourist, but it's very hard to leave this life behind, yeah. regardless of the place. And so I find this very tough. And if you consider being a diplomat or professional expat, not only diplomats, as they say, digital the nomads and these people, well, everyone who is thinking about moving abroad have to consider but in general like would you recommend or you would like say think twice no this is my dream job dream job dream job guys so this is that and the last question for today uh people really get confused and they keep asking me what is it diplomatic community what's that like what for is it actually diplomatic community why do you have it well it's not super powers for sure <laughs> It's just something that's regulated by the Geneva Convention on Diplomatic Community. It's something that all countries subscribed. Uh, they agreed on that. And it gives you a certain level of immunity. So you don't pay taxes. Uh, certain local rules don't apply to you. Uh, your car has a different license plate. Your document is different. Yeah, I'm trying not to shake the camera, please. <laughs> Last question. Uh, well, what is the country that you want to be posted next? This is personal question. Well, Anastasia is always asking me about Paris, Paris, Paris. Well, can you be posted to Paris? Can you call? Can you just go to Paris? So it's Paris. like, so it's like this, as you know, every uh, you can Paris. you can wish for Paris. Everybody, I think that every diplomat dreams about going to Paris. Not everybody gets it. Uh, posting is a tricky process in all ministries and uh, it's a combination of availability of places and how important it is for your career, the contacts you have there. I'm happy to be here in Russia. Uh, I hope next posting might be to Western Europe, but I have a wish on the longer term to go to Asia, of course, Asia. Uh, I had a brilliant experience in Korea. I would like to have maybe some experience in Southeast Asia, like Thailand. Japan. Single. Since your mother is Japanese. But we could go to Japan, still in South China, Beijing, also interesting. Of course, Shanghai. So China. I think that Asia is very interesting. And I know that you would have agree with me on this, but Middle, Middle East could also be very interesting. Even though I know it's challenging. I don't to do. want to wear black every single day. This is my problem. So well, Middle East could be very interesting also. No, so, I believe that it's interesting, but you understand that for me, as for a woman, I'll be in a different kind of difficult position wearing these clothes and, uh, you know, it's difficult. That's it, guys. Can I just take your microphone? Of course. Because we need to finish this video. One second. I hope it's still recording. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. <laughs> yes, he's actually not a random guy. It's my husband, so you can kiss me. Thank you. So, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, please call on below. I'll do my best to answer your questions in the future videos. And I uh, hope you've had a great time with us. And uh, I answered all your, again, questions. And uh, yeah, hope it was helpful, interesting. And uh, like that, I can help some of you to find a dream job and decide if it's better or not. In the future, I will also answer about cruise ship because you were asking under the previous video. Um, but for today, that's it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Kiss, kiss. Well done, bye bye. <laughs> okay, bye guys. Thank bye. you for watching. <laughs>